Like I'm never gonna like try to be like a like oh like so like sweet and manipulative. Like I would just prefer to be like outright manipulative. Hi Tina, how are you? Hi, it's just nice to meet you. Mean Girls is one of the definitive teen movies of all time because it has transcended generations. Now uh, you bring back this story that captivated the world and something that surprised me about this new version is that it's not completely a remake of the original film or the Broadway musical. This film has its own sense, references and elements that make it unique such as social media and even sexual diversity that are important for young people these days and that were not so present in 2024. But I would like to ask you, uh, what was the biggest challenge when adapting this story to 2024? And do you think your view of Mean Girls and what it represents has changed since you wrote it so long ago? Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest challenge, and it was a welcome challenge, was to figure out, you know, now people, even teens, are in a lot of ways more aware of the way they speak to each other. They've probably had a lot of coaching in school of, oh, we're against bullying and all this stuff, but people still find a way to sabotage each other and hurt each other. And so it was trying to figure out where the line was of the, the, the ways that they torture each other. Um, and yes, social media is a part of that uh, landscape now. I f always say it's like, this is these are the newest weapons in the war, but the war has been going on forever and the war is about people and so I think our directors did a really nice job of incorporating social media into the movie without it taking over and also finding ways for it to be funny and not just like you know I don't know just like old people being like this is how teens talk to each other move hey PG-13 please Renee uh, Regina George is one of the most iconic characters in pop culture of the last 20 years and you definitely gave her a different vision in this new version of Mean Girls. I even think you went beyond the musical because uh, now instead of being more calculating and cold when looking for what she wants, we see her being more direct and frontal with her actions. However, uh, she's still powerful, fear and idolized by others, which I believe reflects something very deep that she has always lacked. The, the true love of others for who she is and a little self-love. But how would you describe your version of Regina George and how would you like the audiences to remember her? Did your view of the character change after playing her in the Broadway musical and now in this film? Yeah, I remember like I would kind of like the way that I was doing it initially on Broadway, I was noted to like bring it up and make it a little bit lighter. Um, in my first like couple rehearsals, um, which I understand because that worked better for stage. However, like coming back into the movie version, um, I definitely just really did it my way, I think, um, which is like dry and direct and <sighs> commanding and like very like fuck off, um, which I think is really cool because she like doesn't put on this like oh i'm so sweet it's like more of like a no don't fuck with me do you know what i mean um and i think like for me that's definitely more of like my energy like i'm never gonna like try to be like a like oh like so like sweet and manipulative like i would just prefer to be like outright manipulative ah! look at this thing I can't Sexy. even see it. Like a face breast. Angry, uh, I think one of the lessons that Katie leave, leave us is that in this movie is that not all teenage girls are evil. But when you don't know who you are and you want to belong to a group, you do cruel things in order to feel important and accepted. However, uh, this not only applies to adolescents, but also to life itself. But I want to ask you, what do you think about it? What do you think was the most valued thing that you learned from Katie in this new version of Mean Girls? I think I learned from Katie, it's something I'm constantly learning and it's how to um, admit when you're wrong and how to say sorry. I think Katie does that with such grace and um, understanding for the people that she's hurt. and. 
I like to think that, you know, I haven't, uh, I don't know how to do that, but I think what's amazing about Katie is that she has the courage to do that every time and with every single person. And um, she is afraid at some points to say sorry, but like she does it anyway. And so I think her courage in understanding what she did wrong and apologizing for it is something I really admire about her. Oli, uh, after revisiting the, the original film and watching this new version of Mean Girls, I realized that even though Janice is shown as a completely different person from G Regina George, they're actually not that different. Well, just as she manipulates people to get what she wants, Janice does the same with Katie. But what do you think in general about the character and the version you now play? What do you think is the greatest lesson or satisfaction that being part of Mean Girls gives you? I love that you picked up on that. I remember thinking about that when I was first reading the script, like just auditioning for it. I was like, Janice can be a mean girl too. Like this whole plot of revenge is not just like, Ooh, like, I hope that, that, that she's not as popular anymore. No, this is a takedown of Regina George. Um, mm. And I think it's a really interesting and funny comedic play on like the hierarchy of high school. It feels so important, mm. right? Like everything is a life or death situation with when you're in high school and who is most popular. Um, but with Janice, she also has this amazing ability of saying, you know, I don't care if I sit with only these two people at my lunch table, the people who really know me best, I will not be fitting in with the plastics. I couldn't care less about your clicks. Um, and I think it's a really fun take on the character. I'm glad that you liked it because uh, she is different than, you know, the people who've preceded me in, in playing uh, Janice, uh, but she's fresh and she's mine. And I'm, I really hope other people like her too. Mom, go make snacks. For sure, for sure, Regina, yeah. Do you remember when you first saw Mean Girls? What was it called your attention about the film? And what does playing Aaron in this new version mean to you after watching the movie as a fan? I mean, it, I really don't remember the first time I saw Mean Girls. It's, it's truly something that I think has just always been in the world <laughs> as I know it. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember watching it like a re when it was on TBS as a kid, but I don't remember the first time I saw it. Um, but it's something that everyone pretty much has seen. Mm -hmm. It's something everyone pretty much loves or has an opinion about in one way or another. So there's a lot of pressure, you know, to take on playing Aaron Samuels or whatever. Um, but uh, I just, I don't know, I tried to, to not emulate and just sort of do all that I can do as like an actor and, you know, uh, approach it um, as Chris and not as like someone who is a fan, who is a fan. I am a fan, of course, of, of Mean Girls, but I, I think you can't really approach it like that. I watched it when I was seven years old. So I was quite young, I think like too young to really understand like the depth that's in Mean Girls. And I think when I was seven, I was just like, quite enamored with like how beautiful everyone was and like the fashion and I was just laughing at all the jokes and like high school seemed like this like wild ride that was so so far away and then like you reach that age and you see like how reflective the dynamics in the movies are of like the dynamics of girlhood in real life um, and so I think I related to it far more when I was older obviously um, but you know bringing Karen to the screen I think I like one got to live out this like high school fantasy that I had never personally experienced. I didn't have a traditional high school experience and it was really, really interesting. Um, but I don't know, it also felt like true to me in a sense and or true in general to like be playing like a nice girl and mm -hmm. in, in the mean in in the plastics and like I really enjoyed like kind of retaining that level of 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 goodness um, in the film. I think I, I think like, playing a, a, like an outward villain, I think would have like intimidated me mm. a little, but Karen Karen felt comfortable in that way. Why are you dressed so scary? It's Halloween. Katie, if you don't dress slutty, that is slut shaming us. Jacqueline, at the beginning of the movie, uh, Janice and Damien say that everything we see in this, in this movie is a warning of what can happen if we let ourselves be carried away by revenge. 
But what do you consider to be the message that you would like the audience to take away from this version of the story? I think I want the audience to uh, take away the message of it's okay to just let people be. Mm -hmm. I feel like we not only put expectations on ourselves, but we put them on strangers to be who we think they should be. Um, and that's not reality. That's not how the world works. We're all made different for a reason. Um, and we should celebrate that rather than use it to tear each other down. And I think the plastics find that, but I think also Janice and Damien find that. Katie is who she is. If she wants to wear her rusty shoes to school, we are gonna let her wear her rusty shoes, you know? Like, that's just like, it's who she is. We can't change it, you know? The same way we let each other be our own person. We have to do that with people outside of our friend groups. All we've done is make Regina hotter and revive the wet look. Dance break. Even though 20 years have passed since the release of the first film, I think many things we saw in the original version of Mean Girls are still the same. The, the social power dynamics, forgetting your own personality in order to fit into a group, and toxic attitudes between women are still very present in our society. However, I think that the, the messages of this story remain intact, such as female sisterhood in a world that is already complicated for them. Uh, but uh, above, above all, sorry, being yourself and learning to accept and coexist in a space with completely different people to you. But what do you think about it? How, do, how much do you think these ideas that the film present to us have evolved? And how would you like the audience to remember this new version of Mean Girls. Uh, I hope that people will take this new version as uh, a fun, like a, as in, in many ways, like just a purely fun outing that gives them a little bit of the nostalgia they may feel about the original movie, but also feeling um, new and, and surprising in a lot of ways. Um, and I think, you know, as much as people love the plastics and part of what makes them so funny is the, the the ways that Regina torments people, that I do hope people remember that the core message of the film is to be your authentic self, to let other people live, you know, to not try to not punch down, as people like to say now. Um, I hope that that still sticks with people. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think, you know, um, these human emotions will never change. Being a young person is so complicated and so intense. And I think the original O4 film um, perfectly encapsulates what that experience is. And I think our 2024 version does that as well. Um, you know, a few things have changed since 2004. Obviously, social media provides this like entirely new landscape that is really terrifying um, to to traverse. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think um, thematically, so much of the story um, remains, but maybe there's just um, a, a different way or method that we are kind of exploring some of these things, you know. Sure.